In the previous video, I mentioned a DDL trigger for tracking schema changes, which is appropriate in some cases. But it, it brings up a good question, which is, what are some of the disadvantages or what should we be on the lookout for, for not using triggers? As if you're in uh, general environments and if you were to take a class on databases in general, you'll often hear things like never use triggers and stuff like that, which is stupid because if that was the case, then they wouldn't exist. I mean, if they were so bad, they would not exist at all, okay? So there are some arguments against triggers, and I'm going to kind of put my my own commentary on these arguments, and these are some of the, the common arguments. One of them is they're very easy to overlook when troubleshooting, especially for what I call GUI DBAs. Um, GUI DBAs are people who use the interface, right? Uh, they don't you know, if you're a scripting DBA, this is less of a problem because a scripting DBA is going to have a script to go get like all the triggers, all the tables, all the objects basically, and they think an object. So every potential object that could exist in a, a database, they're going to go get. And the other thing too is there's a lot of scripts and scripting DBAs who know how to create documentation very easily. So whether you know T-SQL or PowerShell or even Python or um, other languages, you can get that information and, and save it and document an environment very quickly and, and identify that. But for someone who relies on the GUI, a little bit different because they're dependent on the, the interface. And if, you know, they don't click the drop down menu on the triggers, then you're right, they don't know it exists. It doesn't pop up with the tables, right? So think about when they're trying to troubleshoot a problem. If you're going through the GUI and you're not checking the triggers, that could be the source of the problem. So it's not that obvious. And when people argue about the fact that, well, you know, you know, triggers are not always documented, that's true, but that's a problem with a lot of different things, right? It's kind of like what I put up here about stored procedures and SQL injection. I mean, a, a good stored procedure will stop it, yes, but a bad stored procedure isn't going to stop it. And it's the same thing like when someone tells me about, oh, well, but the problem is, you know, it's easy to forget. Well, but that's true with anything. I mean, like, you can forget all kinds of things. That's why we have documentation in the first place. So yes, it's true that GUI DBAs are probably going to be tripping out more about uh, triggers, scripting DBAs less so. Um, but the thing is, is I don't think from my take, that's not really an argument against triggers. That could be an argument against anything. I mean, if you're going to forget about something, well, it's going to bite you in the head. That being said, it is something that I, I agree with some people, it's, it's easy to overlook. Um, number two, if written incorrectly, if coded incorrectly, or architected wrong, or placed in an inappropriate environment, those are three different situations, but uh, they can cause major headaches. <laughs> Triggers have an unintended effect on things like replication, so you have to be very careful. Um, think about uh, an update of a million records, and you have a trigger on an update. What do you think is going to happen? Okay, and this is going to get to my third point in a second. But the idea is that if, if it's written poorly or if it's architected wrong, in other words, if you're not capturing what you need or you're not thinking about, okay, but let's suppose I capture that, what could that potentially do? Um, or then placed in an inappropriate environment, yeah, it'll cause headaches. Uh, so for instance, in the example... Uh, the previous example of creating the DDL trigger on uh, alter table, keep in mind that if we design it to where it's going to insert a record every time a table is altered, if we alter, um, you know, a table, let's say we have a table with, a, let's say, you know, 500 columns, and if we alter 400 columns, or we alter that table 400 times, it's going to create 400 records, right? So it is adding some overhead, which brings me to my third point. Triggers do add OLTP overhead. Now, this is why I think I have less of a problem with triggers than most people. I'm very familiar with OLAP and OLTP environments, and I'm very comfortable with both environments. I've worked in a mixed environment pretty much my entire career. I have worked with a lot of DBAs, though, who've only worked in one or the other, and so OLAP DBAs tend to trip out over triggers a lot, and it's because it does add OLTP overhead, right? If, again, if we go back to updating a million records, what do you think the effect of that is going to be? right? It adds that OLTP overhead. So your database becomes more of a transactional database. Well, now think about how many people use triggers and run into trouble in OLAP environments, and they don't realize that. So they haven't built their environment for that purpose, and then they experience the effect of that. So I can understand for people who are not from those environments how that can, that can kind of intimidate them uh, from using it. But overall, triggers are not bad. They're, they're, 
are situations where they're useful, but I would be careful and going back to the documentation point, like everything in our environment, yes, we should be careful about forgetting that they exist or forgetting that anything exists because that can always be a concern when that occurs.